about church. Open it in the book of Matthew chapter 16 and let's read from verse number 13 until verse number 20. Matthew 16, 13 to 20. So I'll be reading verse 13 and then let's do this responsively until we meet in verse number 20. In verse 13, it says here, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I am I, the son of man am? He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I will give unto thee the keys, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charge his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we are thankful and so privileged, Lord, for, be, for being here. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful songs that we've sung. But still, Lord, we acknowledge the fact that the most important part of our worship service is none other than studying the Word of God. Thank you, Lord, for the freedom, the liberty that we have right now in studying the Word and for these people, Lord, who are valuing the essence of prayer by attending this prayer service. We're praying, Lord, that those who are not here, though they have their own reasons, will still learn how to value the, the, the every service of this church that we have. We're praying, Lord, that uh, they, they will come to the point of their lives that they really understand how important this assembly is, this church is in particular. Thank you, Lord, and bless me as I speak. There's nothing in me. Help us, O oh Lord, to, to have receptive hearts that we will try to understand what your will in our life is. All these things I ask, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So allow me to give the title. For this message, how can be a strong church? How can be a strong church? Now, church is the translation of the Greek term, ecclesia. Tama nga naman. And it's used in the New Testament to identify the community of believers in Jesus Christ. Going back to the definition of what the church is, um, as what our professor imparted to us last Bible study, Professor Wilson. He told us that the meaning of church is, um, wait, uh, I think I lost it. The meaning of church is an organized congregation of born again, scripturally baptized individual in a given place, meeting in covenant with God, and with each to carry out the spirit and the letter of Christ's commission as found in Matthew 28, 18 to 20. So basically, church is something that is not a building. Going back to the Old Testament, we will be able to see what a church is. Though they were not scripturally baptized, but the fact is these people were assembling together. And you call it church. But here in the New Testament, and in our, in our church nowadays, the word church is a similar term was used in the Old Testament, referring to those events such as the day of the assembly, the Lord's congregation, or meeting before the Lord. Thus, when Jesus declares, I will build my church in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, it did not come as something unfamiliar to his disciples. Because actually, they already had an idea of what church was. Now, in the New Testament, the word is confined strictly to refer to the congregation of believers in Jesus Christ. Kaya nga po, we are so very blessed that we are not only saved but we are also a member of the body, which is the church of God. It is worth mentioning that in the New Testament, no synagogue, no temple, chapel, or even huge tabernacle, a building or other meeting place was ever called a church. 
If you are going back to the New Testament, the term church always referred to the Christian assembly. And in the New Testament, it was used for both the local community of believers. Kaya tayo dito, we call ourselves church. Kaya ikaw, ako, tayong lahat, ang tawag sa atin ay iglesia ng Panginoon. Kaya nga po, we don't believe na, na ang church ay walang right authority. It always has a right authority. Now, number one, Jesus founded this church. And we know that the rock he was referring in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, he says here, And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. I believe that when Jesus Christ was telling this to Peter, he was not pointing out something that is literal rock. Amen? Rather, he was pointing out himself. Because we believe that the rock that whom we are serving is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, there was a verse that says, The Lord is my rock and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Kaya nga po mga kapatid, we are blessed na ang, na ang church ay nag-perpetuate mula pa sa panahon ni Kristo. Why? Because it is a promise of God as found in Matthew chapter 16 verse 18 that even the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You think of the very foes or the very best enemy that a church can face against with. And dito, pinangalanan ng Panginoon yun that even the gates of hell, the most, ano bang pwede sabihin natin? Y yung pinakadakilang enemy na pwedeng humadlang sa simbahan was even challenged by Jesus Christ that even the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Kaya nga, wala sa atin ang pwedeng magyabang na yan, church na yan, mawawala yan kung wala ako. Gagaling ka pa ba sa impyerno? E doon ka nga iniligtas ng Panginoon. Gagaling, gagaling pa ba ako sa impyerno? Yung bang kakayanan ko ay eh, gagaling pa sa kakayanan pwedeng gawin ng impyerno? Kaya wala sa ating pwedeng magmayabang. All of us here are only entitled to give gratitude to God. Kaya therefore, it is not an ordinary church that Christ built. It is not a weak church because He promised that even the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen? Amen. Sadly, the word today, I mean, sadly, the, the word church today seems to be neglected. I mean, nagiging mababaw na ang pakahulugan ng ibang mga tao sa salitang church. I, I believe, hindi lamang ito problema ng ibang simbahan. This is a problem kahit sa ating simbahan. Because there are Christians here that iniisip nila that church is something is only a place for acquaintance. It is only a place to go to every Sunday. E anong pinagkaibi natin sa katoliko kung ganyan tayo? E dati naman tayo nagsisimba eh. Amen? So what's the difference of being a member of the church and being just going to the church or just going to the church? Walang pinagkaiba. Kaya magiging maingat tayo sa puso natin. Mga kapatid, Bakit ka ba nandito? Bakit ba ako miyembro ng simbahang ito? Sino bang pinaglilingkuran ko? Ang Diyos bang pinaglilingkuran ko? Amen? Amen. Sino bang pinaglilingkuran ko? Kasi kung sino ang... Kung, anong bagay nagmamotivate sa, nagmamotivate sa iyo, yun ang Diyos mo. For example, for example, andito ka sa Cambodia just because you have your own job. Just because you were given, you, you were given a chance to, to work sa Florida or sa ibang school. What if mawala na yung school? Are we still going to be in the church? Kasi kung ano ang nagmamotivate sa'yo, yun ang Diyos mo. Amen? Amen? Hindi ako atin sa church. Hindi ako atin sa church kasi hindi ko gusto ang suot ko. Ano ba motivation mo? Sino ba ang Diyos mo? Ang Diyos mo ba yung external appearance mo? Hindi ako, hindi ako pupunta sa school kasi hindi ko feel pumasok. Kapatid, ano bang mission mo sa school? Is it only to work and to gain money? Or ang mission mo sa school is to be a living testimony so that you will be able to reach these people Amen. and lead them to the, at the feet of Jesus. Kaya magiging maingat tayo of what kind of heart we have. What kind of motivation we have. What kind of thought we have. Kasi everything will be manifested soon whether you like it or not. Amen. Lahat yan, darating ang, darating ang panahon na makikita at makikita. 
ang mga taong iba ang layunin sa iglesia. Kaya nga lagi sinasabi ni Pastor Joey Reyes, kung makot ko lang, sabi niya lagi, no users please. Walang manggagamit. Amen? Ano bang, ano bang plano mo sa hinaharap? May hirap sa atin, nagpa-plano na tayo in the future. Well, hindi masamang mag-plano in the future. I have my own plans in the future. But, ang mahirap kasi, nagpa-plano tayo sa hinaharap without even considering the church. Pupunta ako dito. Mag-work ako dito. Wala, hindi ko man lang narinig y- y- yung concern mo sa simbahan. Now, for many people, the barometer of being a strong church or what they can actually see. Big attendance, huge buildings, big properties, laki ng pagbibigay sa loob ng simbahan. Pero ano ba talaga ang essence? Ano ba talaga ang totoong kahulugan ng isang matibay na iglesia? How can we be a strong church in a crook and reprobate world? The Bible says, this world lieth in the wickedness. Now, papaano ang isang iglesia ay patuloy na tatayong matibay sa mundong pasama na ng pasama? But then, the assurance is this. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. How can we be a strong church? Paano magiging matibay ang ating iglesia? Number one, by making it strong spiritually. By making it strong spiritually. Ano yung mga kaparaanan so that we will make our church strong spiritually? Number one, fill it, fill it with the knowledge of God's word. Open your Bible if you have it with you in Acts chapter 20 verse number 32. Acts chapter 20 verse number 32. The Bible says, and now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Kaya nga ang pagtibay, mga kapatid, ang pagtibay ng isang Kristiyano ay nakadepende, hindi sa mga mangangaral. Kasi nga, kahit gaano kagaling na mangangaral, kahit anong verse ang ipakita sa iyo sa Bible, if you don't have the willing heart to change your mind, to change your heart, to change your ways, then it's all nothing. Walang kabulahan ng mga bagay na yan. How can we be a strong church? Fill it with the knowledge of God's Word. Kasi kapatid, ang, ang, ang isang kristyanong matibay, ang isang kristyanong punong-puno ng salita ng Diyos, balot ng salita ng Diyos, hindi matitinag. Darating ang persecution, darating ang problema, pero mananatili yan. Darating ang mga unfavorable circumstances, darating ang mga unfavorable situations, pero mananatili yan. Why? Because they are grounded, they are filled with the knowledge of God's Word. Kaya nga we are so be- very blessed na meron tayo dito mga, uh, mga, mga extra programs. Hindi lamang church services, Sunday services, prayer meeting. We all, we, we have these um, Bible studies that everyone is encouraged to attend to. Why? Because sa pamamagitan na ito, sama-sama tayong titibay. At mamaya makikita po natin yan. Now, fill it with a knowledge of God's Word can be accomplished by regular preaching, Bible school, VBS gospel meetings, tracts distribution, church library, home Bible studies, and alam mo, ka- kahit, kahit ano pang sabihin, kahit ano pang programa ng simbahan, kung wala kang pusong nakikiisa, wala rin sa isa yan. Pabira, hindi, hindi ka nga nagbabasa ng Bible, wala kang personal devotion, hindi ka pa umaattend. Ano nga asa mo sa sarili mo? Amen? Tapos pag sinaway ka, nagagalit ka pa. Pusong bato. Yes, Sir Ilson. By making it strong spiritual. How can we be a strong church? By making it strong spiritually. Fill it with knowledge of God's word. You know, plain Bible preaching is essential. Just the plain Bible teaching. Kaya nga, we come here not to hear opinions. We come here not to hear personal insights. 
Bagamat maganda mga bagay na yan, pero ang ipinupunta natin dito is just the plain word of God. Plain word of God. Alam mo, the, the Bible can stand even without this extra biblical revelation. Magandang may mga commentaries, magandang may mga ginagamit tayong mga, mga applications for us to, to, to really get deeper sa salita ng Diyos. But the thing is, the word of God is sufficient and enough. It is enough. Kaya, alam mo, we are grateful that we have preachers, mga kapatid. Hindi ako yun, ha? That we have preachers that are really getting deeper sa salita ng Diyos. Alam mo, ang hirap na makakita ng simbahan ganyan. Ako, driver ako ng papa ko sa Pilipinas. So, I was able to go to different kinds of churches. At ang mga preachings, hindi naman sa pag-ano, talagang, talagang, kwento na lang. Kwento na lang. Philippians chapter 16, verses 27 to 31. So this account is a story of the Philippian jailer. Amen? Philippians, uh, sorry, sorry, um, Acts chapter 16, verse, verses 27 to 31. Let's see, kung anong naging resulta ng isang plain Bible preaching. Okay, it says here, and the keeper of the prison awaking out of sleep, because nakatakas na nga po si si Peter and Silas, if I'm not mistaken. And seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoner has, had, been, had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Anong gagawin ko para maligtas ako? Anong sagot ni Paul? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Just the plain Bible preaching. This Philippian jailer got saved. Kaya we are conde condemning those churches na may mga propaganda, programa, sasabihin nila naligtas, may pabanda, May pa-dance showdown. Malapit na yan. Nakakaroon na rin dance showdown. Amen? Because just the plain preaching of the word of God, people will get saved. Anyway, ang, ang trabaho naman natin na hindi magligtas. Our, our job is only to fulfill the Great Commission. And that is to go and to teach. And then the Holy Spirit part is to convict the sinners and the sinners is to repent of their sins and accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Yun lang. Hindi natin kailangan ng kung ano-anong programa. Bagat mag magaganda, may mga programa, we do feeding, we go to this outreach just teaching English, but those are just tools only so that we will be able to reach them out. But then, but then the thing is, just the plain preaching of the Word of God can cause men to have faith. Plain Bible preaching is the command to preachers. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 2. So we will be going through a lot of verses po ngayong umaga. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 2. So this is the charge of Paul to Timothy. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Tinan nyo yung charge na binigay ni Paul kay Timothy. Mahirap pa sa atin, ang gusto lang natin, exhortation. Pag-rebuke, ayaw na natin yan. Pag-reproof, ayaw na natin yan. Ang gusto lang natin, exhortation. Gusto lang natin, love-lovan. Gusto lang natin, mahal-mahalan tayo dito. Pag na-rebuke ka, ayaw na natin. Amen? Why? Because we have pride in our hearts. And we know that pride goeth before destruction. It will destroy you spiritually. I'm not saying that na pag may pride ka, mawawalang kaligtasan mo. But I mean, if you have pride in your heart, then it will cut off the fellowship with you between God. Colossians ch chapter 1, verse number 18. Lifting up God is what preaching is to promote. Sabi po dito, and He is the head of the body, which is the 
church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Sa lahat ng bagay, nasa kanya ang kataasan. Kaya kung magaling kang preacher, well, thank God. Purihin na Diyos. Pero, the person who must be promoted, who must be given highlight, is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Wala tayong lugar sa pagyayabang. All of us were as filthy rags. All of us were in the form of worms. It's just that the grace of God abounded to each and every one of us. Kaya tayo nandirito. Tingnan mo, anong buhay meron ka? Isipin mo, anong buhay meron ka nung wala ka pa kay Kristo? Anong direction ng tinatahak mo? Baka nga wala pang direction ng tinatahak eh. Baka nga wala ka pang goal na tinatahak. But because God saved you, at least you know somehow kung ano bang path ang itatrad mo sa buhay mo. How can we be a strong church by making it strong spiritually? Fill it with knowledge of God's word. Number two, make it a praying church. Make it a praying church. Kung gusto natin ng matatag na simbahan, kung gusto natin ng simbahan na hindi nauugat na yayanig, make it a praying church. Alam naman natin that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17, it says there pray without ceasing. Why? Because this is, for this is the will of God. Kalooban, kalooban ba ng Diyos na tayo manalangin? Yes. Kalooban ba ng Diyos na umatan tayo ng prayer meeting? Yes. Ang mahirap kasi sa atin, naniniwala ka ba sa prayer? Oo oh, kapatid, naniniwala ako sa prayer. Eh, ba't absent ka ng prayer meeting? Naniniwala ka pala sa prayer meeting eh. Sa prayer. Ba't absent ka ng prayer meeting? O ba't late ka sa prayer meeting? Ba't parang walang gana ka during prayer meeting services? Naniniwala ka pala sa prayer. Yan ang mahirap. Or dalhin natin to sa personal mong karanasan, personal nating buhay. Naniniwala ako sa prayer. Oo, oh, ba't hindi ka nananalangin? Ang dami-dami nating time para sa sarili nating kapakanan. Tatrabaho tayo five hours or six hours a day. And then, we are consuming a lot of time with our social medias. Pero, how much time do we spend in prayer? How much time do we spend in prayer? Not only that fill it with the knowledge of God's word, not only make it a praying church, make it also a united church. Kung gusto natin ng simbahang matatag at malakas, then make it a united church. No factions, bitter contentions, or strife. Amen? Nalimutan ko kung anong account yun, but there, there's this account na nagsasabing na, na, na ang, ang church ay parang inhalintulad sa katawan. May iba't ibang kasangkapan, may iba't ibang gawain, pero lahat ng bagay na ito ay nagsasama-sama upang sa pagtibay ng katawan at para sa accomplishment ng katawan. Amen? Kaya nga, every one of us here is important. Mahalaga ang bawat isa sa atin. You have your own work, you have your own function, I have my own. At lahat tayo dapat maging tapat sa bagay na ito. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 10. Make it a united church. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 10. So this is the command of Apostle Paul. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. Kaya nga, kung magkakaiba tayo ng kaisipan, imposible magkasundo tayo. Kaya kung iba't iba tayo yun ng, ng layunin, hindi talaga tayo magkakasundo. Why? Because the only thing na pwede nating maging uh, pwede nating maging middle ground is what? Is to have the same mind and the same judgment. Make it a united church. Great unity was evident in the first century church in Jerusalem. Acts chapter 4 verse number 32 and 34. Ano pong sabi dito? And the multitude of them that believed were one of, were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which 
he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the prices of the things that were sold. Now, material things were divided so that there will be equality in Jerusalem. Now, today, hindi ko naman sinasabing kung anong meron tayong lahat, pag samasamahin natin, divide natin. What I'm trying to point out, what I'm trying to drive right now is the Lord has blessed us with people who are deep, amen, and are much more intellectual with regards to the Word of God. And so they are trying to impart, okay, yung mga bagay na natutunan nila. Why? So that there will be equality among us. What I'm, point, what I'm pointing is this. What I'm pointing out is this. Alam mo, ang ganda ng simbahan na pagdating sa kaalaman ng Diyos, lahat tayo equal. I mean, yung sabay-sabay tayong lumalago. Sabay-sabay tayong lumalalim. Sabay-sabay tayong, sabay-sabay tayong nagiging dedicated sa pag-aaral ng Biblia. Why? Sapagkat so that there will be equality. And if we have equality, then it promotes a united church. Kaya nga we are blessed, mga kapatid, na may mga tumatayo dito sa pulpit na talagang, sabihin ko nang mahuhusay pagdating sa salita ng Diyos. And I hope na ang goal ng bawat isa sa atin ay hindi lamang maging ganyan tayo. Ganyan na lang tayo. Kundi magkaroon din tayo nung, nung bang talagang paglago. Paglago sa salita ng Diyos. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 to 6 We are to give diligence to be unified We are to work at it I d- Therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love Endeavoring to keep the unity of spirit in the bond of peace There is one body and one spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. And God, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Alam mo, dito, sa binasa natin, puro one God, one faith, one baptism. So, what I'm saying is this, mer- meron tayong isang bautismo, meron tayong isang pananampalataya, meron tayong isang Diyos. Bakit hindi tayo magkasundo? We have a lot of things in common. Bakit hindi tayo magkasundo? I know we, we all came from different churches. We have our own upbringing. We had our own um, culture. We had our own uh, pagkakain din sa salita ng Diyos. But kapatid, andito na tayo eh. And I hope that everyone of us will strive to be unified with the church, mga kapatid. I know we all have our own individual differences. May pagkakaiba tayo sa ating mga ugali. But then mga kapatid, hindi naman yan ang issue dito eh. Ang issue dito is maging kaisa tayo ng iglesia. Kakaunti na nga tayo, hindi pa tayo magkaisa. Buti pa yung mali. Ang dami nila. Nanatiling madami. Bakit? Nagkakaisa eh. Yun nga lang sa mali. Eh tayo nasa tama. Ba't hindi tayo magkaisa? Tamo yung mali. Parami sila ng parami. Hindi ko masasabing magparami tayo ng parami. Anyway, maganda namang maging marami tayo. What I'm pointing out is this. Maganda yung kakaunti tayo or maganda kung pagpalain tayo na just maging marami rin tayo pero the fact is nagkakaisa. The thing is, dapat nagkakaisa. Amen? Ang hirap, ang hirap yung bang makakasalubong mo siya. Hindi, hindi mo na. Kasi mahal mo siya eh. Alam mo yung feeling? Di lang ikaw ang nahihirapan. Di lang ikaw ang nasasaktan, kapatid. Kira Luzon, ginagaya kita. <laughs> mga drama mo. <laughs> <laughs> Hindi, totoo po mga kapatid. Ang hirap, napakahirap. Nagtatago na lang kami sa room. Kasi awkward eh, makita mak- mak- mo siya. Alam mo naman siya yung sasabi ko, no? Alam niyo naman po siguro yun. Pero kasi mahal mo siya. Ang sakit, mahirap, mahirap mga kapatid. Napakahirap. 
But we are to give diligence to be unified. We have to work at it. Hindi yan something that is instantaneous. Hindi yan sa isang snap ay united na tayo lahat. No. Darating talaga ang panahon na tayo liligligin ng sitwasyon at pagkakataon. And that's the only time na talagang magiging united tayo. Masakit mang sabihin, mawala na ang mawala. Makip lang natin ang unity within the church. We are commanded to protect ourselves from those who would destroy our unity. Ano sabi sa Romans chapter 16 verses 17 and 18? Romans chapter 16 verses 17 and 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good works and fair speeches, Deceive the hearts of the simple. Amen? Kaya nga, kung tayo mananatiling simple, kung tayo mananatiling ganito sa ating katayuan, hindi lumalalim, hindi lumalago, darating ang panahon, you will be deceived. You will get deceived. Why? Eh, simple ka eh. Hindi ka mature eh. Hindi ka lumago eh. Natural na dala ka. Natural na deceive ka. Amen? Ang jablo pa naman, napakaraming resources, napakaraming tools, napakaraming ways para dayain ang Kristiyano. But if we are grounded, built up, and established in the faith through the Word of God, then there's no way that the devil can win against us, over us, mga kapatid. So if we want to have a strong church, make it strong, spirit, make it strong spiritually. Fill it with knowledge of God's word. Make it a praying church. Make it a united church. Next is make it a loving church. Mapagmahal na simbahan. Ito mahirap eh. Minsan sa sobrang pagmamahal, minsan nakukonsinti na natin yung tao. Amen? Minsan mali na yung idea ng salitang pagmamahal. Minsan kahit alam mong mali na, dahil mahal mo yung tao, hindi natin kukonsintihin. Which is mali. Ano pong sabi sa 1 Peter chapter 1 verse number 22? 1 Peter chapter 1 verse number 22. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit and to unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Alam mo, minsan, pag talagang mahal mo yung tao, you have to let go of that person. Hindi, <laughs> hindi po yun, hindi po yun something na ano talaga. Amen? You have to let go of that person kung talagang mahal mo yung tao. Gagawin mo yung isang bagay, you will do that act, you will do that action. Why? Because you love that person. Sa mataman ng tao, parang naagrabyado siya at hindi niya mauunawaan yun. Not unless na magkakaroon siya ng heart. Repentant heart. We have to let go of that person, mga kapatid. Make it a loving church. Sana, bawat isa sa atin dito, kayang kamayan ang bawat isa. Mahirap po talaga, Pastor. Hindi ko po magawa sa diet yun. <laughs> Hirap. Sana, bawat isa sa atin dito, kaya bang titigan sa mata at ngitian man lang? Sana, sana, bawat isa sa atin dito, yung bang pag nagkasalubong, yung hindi na iiwas na napakalayong daan. Amen? Hindi yung magka, ano ko pa dyan sa highway, doon ko pa sa Korean Road dadaan. Doon, pag ano, maiwasan mo lang yung tao. Well, alam ko po mahirap yun. Kasi na-experience ko yan. Pero we have to do it, mga kapatid. We have to do it. Amen? Because kung gusto natin ng isang matibay na iglesia, then make it a loving church. Make it a loving church. And, and I believe na there's, there's no way na hindi mo kayang mahalin yung kapwa mo because ikaw mismo is recipient ng pag-ibig ng Diyos. Amen? 
Ikaw mismo ay recipient ng pag-ibig ng Diyos. Isipin mo, paano kung hindi ka minahal ng Diyos? Siyempre, mal- alam mo na kung anong mangyayari sa'yo. Now, isipin mo, ikaw ba wala kang utang na loob para hindi mo rin mahalin yung kapwa mo hindi ka mahal-mahal? Actually, ang totoong ang sukatan ng pag-ibig, kapatid, is yung pag-ibig natin sa ating kaaway. Kasi the Bible is commanding us that love your enemies. Amen? Amen. Make it a loving church. Next, James chapter 1 verse 27. If we want to have a strong church, keep it unspotted from the world. James chapter 1 verse 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Ano daw po yung pure religion? Ano daw po yung religion na talagang walang halong dungis? Mga kapatid, it is a church that keep himself unspotted from the world. Kapatid, matindi na ang laban sa mundo. And I hope, mga kapatid, na yung mundo ay hindi na makakapenetrate sa church. Pabira, from Monday to Saturday, nasa mundo tayo. I mean, what I'm saying is, nasa trabaho tayo, from Monday to Friday. And that work somehow pictures the world. Because we are working with the people that are not in Christ. Amen? And nasa simbalan tayo Saturday and Sunday. At kung hindi tayo matatag na kristyano, anong laban natin? Amen? Kung hindi pa tayo nagbabasa ng Biblia at nananalangin, anong laban natin sa mundo? Anong laban natin sa mundo? If we, have to ha- if we want to have a strong church, keep it unspotted from the world. Revelation chapter 2 verses 1 to 4. Ah, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Ano pa sabi dito? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, and acceptable, and perfect will of God. Ano daw po yung transform na buhay sa nagsisimula? By the renewing of our mind. So everything starts with the way we think. Amen. Kapag sa isip pa lang natalo ka na, then wag mo nang asahang magtatagumpay ka. Kapag sa isip mo pa lang may doubt na, then wag mong asahan na sumangsusod na panahon magpapatuloy ka pa. Kaya nga we are very blessed sa isang simbahan that you can speak for yourself. Kung may kung may ano ka, kung may inquiries ka, kung may kung may katanungan ka, you can freely stand up and bring it to the church. Because not all churches give that opportunity. Hindi sa lahat ng simbahan pwede kang magtanong. And otherwise, you will be marked as a rebel. Amen. How can we be a strong church? So number one, by making it strong spiritually. Number two, by making it strong in deeds. By making it strong in deeds. Fill it with zeal and devotion. Revelation chapter 2 verses 1 to 4. Let's see uh, this, the story of the church at Ephesus. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, This thing saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works. Amen? Sabi ng Diyos, alam ko naman ang ginawa niyo eh, and thy labor, and thy patience, and th- how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which, are, which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Alam mo, kita naman ng Diyos eh, kapatid. Kung baga, kung i-apply natin sa panahon ngayon, kita naman ng Diyos eh, kung anong ginagawa mo, kung gano'ng ka-devoted, kung anong mga ministry yung nahawakan mo, kung gano'ng ka-faithful, mga kapatid. Pero kapatid, ang tanong ko ito, yan pang bagay na yun na ginagawa mo pa out of love? Because ang sabi ng Bible dito, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Because thou hast left thy first love. Kasi madaming mga bagay, kapatid, madaming mga bagay sa simbahan na ginagawa na lang natin sapagkat nakasanayan na lang natin. 
naging buhay na lang natin. At itong mga bagay na to kung ito'y ating gagawin ng walang pag-ibig, ang mga bagay na ito'y walang kabuluhan. Sabi nga sa 1 Corinthians chapter 13, ang daming mga gifts ang binanggit doon, mga kapatid. May, mayroong binigyan ng gift to prophecy, to prophesy, mayroong binigyan ng gift to, to, to miracles, to, to speaking in tongues. But then, kung, ang mga bagay na ito, kung walang pag-ibig, lahat ng mga bagay na walang kabuluhan. Magaling kang mag-song lead, pero kung walang pag-ibig sa pag, pag-song lead mo, wala yung kabuluhan. Magaling kang umawit, pero whenever you are singing here, and walang pag-ibig yan, wala yung kabuluhan. Lahat ng bagay na ginagawa natin must be motivated by love. Otherwise, God would somewhat against you. Ang Diyos magkakaroon ng isang bagay na laban sa iyo. Why? Because thou hast left thy first love. Ang hirap pa namang iwanan ng first love. Amen? Ang hirap. Kahit pasabihin mong tagal na panahon na lumipas because yun ang first love mo, napakahirap. Tinutukoy ko ang Diyos ha? Amen? I'm referring to God. Amen? Imagine mo yung puso ng Panginoon dito. Amen? Alam ng Diyos, sa, na, tumangat ng church at Ephesus, natatrabaho sila, magandang ginagawa nila, lahat ng mga bagay na, na pabor ay ginagawa nila para sa Diyos. Pero ang Diyos hindi nalulugod eh. Why? Because yung ginagawa nila wala ng pag-ibig. Amen? Kaya nga everything that must be done and said here behind the pulpit, must be motivated by love. Kahit galit na galit na tayo, it must be out of love. Amen? Whenever we preach, nagpipreach tayo, hindi dahil meron tayong against. Okay, kapatid? We are preaching because gusto na natin mabago siya sa pamagitan ng salita ng Diyos. Bakit? Sapagkat mahal natin siya. Amen? Sapagkat mahal natin siya. Number two, make it a church that values church services. Kung gusto natin ng simbahang malakas o matatag, make it a church that values church services. It's good to have our own personal worship to God. Amen? It's good to have our own personal worship to God. But corporate worship is another thing. Amen? Ano bang design ng church? Ano bang definition ng church? Called out assembly. Eh kung ikaw, mananatili ka sa bahay mo, sasabihin mo, doon mo nalang sinasamba ang Panginoon. Ano pa ang essence ng church? Amen? Ikaw ba, kung mag-isa ka, assembly bang matatawag ang sarili mo? Hindi. Amen? Doon sa, nagpapastor pa ang tatay ko sa Candelaria. May mga members doon na pag hindi daw sila umaaten sa simbahan, nasa harap daw sila ng TV. At pinapanood na lang nila yung ibang mga church services na nasa Biblia. At doon daw sila sumasamba sa Panginoon. Asan ang essence ng pagiging church? Amen? Mabira, ang lapit-lapit na nga ng mga bahay natin. Oh. Ano pang dahilan para hindi tayo maka ng church? Amen? Ito mahirap eh. Pag sa trabaho, never tayong late. Pero pag sa church, kung hindi late, laging buzzer beater. Amen? Yung bang pagpasok mo, sakto, unang awitan. Ang daming ganyan. Kung hindi late, laging buzzer beater. Pero sa, sa school, talagang kung tatakbuhin mo lang yung antaw doon, yung, yung inaanuhan ng fingerprint, antaw doon. Yung timing, kung mahahabol mo lang, ahabulin mo. Bakit? Pag nalate ka, may kaltas eh. Nagkakandarapa ka. Talagang sabi ni Chana, ano, ano nangyari, ano nangyari? Kala, kala ni Chana, may gulo eh. Yung pala, malilate. <coughs> Amen? Why? Sapagkat may mga, tar- may mga Christiano o ilan sa atin talaga hindi nagva-value ng church services. Now, kung ang bawat isa sa atin, kung ang bawat isa sa atin ay, mag- ay, ay magbibigay ng, ng importansya sa mga gantong uri ng gawain, then we are making our church strong. Pinapalakas natin ang ating iglesia. Amen? If we want to have a strong church, make its worship scriptural and spiritual. John 4 chapter 20 John chapter 4 23 and 24. Ano po sabi dito? 
But the hour cometh, and now is all when the true worshippers worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It must be in spirit, mga kapatid. Kaya nga, bago tayo pumunta sa simbahan to worship God, saliksikin natin ang ating puso. Ano bang espiritu ang dadalhin ko sa, sa, sa simbahan? Nag-away kayo ng asawa mo, iwan mo muna yung bitterness. Amen? Iwan mo muna yung anger sa bahay nyo. Why? Because you should have the right kind of spirit before worshiping God. Bawa, nagkaroon ka ng problema sa trabaho. Ay, huwag mong idamoy sa simbahan. Iba naman ang issue ng trabaho sa kanang simbahan. Amen? Nagkaroon ka ng problema sa bossing mo. Ay, ibang problema nyo doon sa school kaysa sa simbahan. Why? Because there are Christians na kung may problema sa ibang bagay sa labas ng simbahan, dinadala pati sa loob ng simbahan. So ano pang espiritu ang dadalhin mo? Paano ka pa magkakaroon ng pusong handang tumanggap ng salita ng Diyos? Kung yung puso mo balot na ng bitterness, ng anger, ng hatred. Amen? Paano pa? Paano pa? And it must be in truth. Our worship must be scriptural and spiritual. If we want to have a strong church, fill it with workers who above all long to win souls for Christ. This kind of workers will cause the church to grow anywhere at any time. Acts chapter 8 verses 1 to 4. Let's see what happened here after the persecutions they had. And Saul was consenting unto his death and at the time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. Verse number 2. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. And for Saul, he made havoc out of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women committed them to prison. So nakita natin yung great persecution. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Kung gusto natin ng simbahang matatag, matibay, mga kapatid, Make it, so, sorry, fill it with workers who above all long to win souls for Christ. This kind of workers will cause the church to grow anywhere and anytime. Kaya kung may mga outreach program, mag-participate tayo. Kaya kung may mga camp na nagiging opportunity para sa, para sa evangelism ng mga kamay people, let's participate. Why? Because on the first place, nandirito tayo sa pagkat ng mga taong yan. Because we want to minister them. That's our first priority why we are here. Amen? Kung may job ka, kung may work ka, well, extra blessing na lang yan. The point is, andito ka because gusto mong magamit ka ng Diyos to reach out these people. Amen? Do something, mga kapatid. Do something to reach out sa anumang kaparaanan, do something to reach out these people. At ang ganda na ang layunin ng bawat isa sa atin, mga kapatid, ay i-reach out ang mga Cambodian. Number two, soul winners are wise. Ang sabi sa Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30. Proverbs 11, 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Alam mo, ano bang pagiging wise sa nag-aakay ka ng kaliluwa? Isa lang ang sagot. You are investing eternally. nag invest ka. nag invest ka ng mga bagay para sa langit. Sabi nga ni Paul sa 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 18, While we look not at the things which are not seen and the things which are seen. For the things which are not seen are eternal. But the things which are seen are temporal. Sabi sa Colossians, sabi doon, set your affections on things above, not on things on earth. Amen? Amen. So if we want to have a strong church, fill it with workers who above all win souls for Christ. Next, make it a cheerful, liberally giving church. Kung gusto natin ng matatag na iglesia, make that church a cheerful 
giving church. Amen? Ang ganda nga sa simbahan natin eh. Walang pilitan sa pagbibigay. Papaunawa lang sa'yo anong kahalaga ng stewardship. Then it's up to you whether you apply it or not. Because not all churches are like that. May simbahan nga na pinasara yung simbahan eh. Walang uuwi hanggat hindi natin nakukompleto ang ating goal. Oh. Para makompleto na lang, nagbigay pa yung mga members. Asan doon ang liberal giving? Asan doon ang cheerfulness? But here in our church, tinuturoan tayong i-practice ang faithful stewardship. Amen? And that's it. That's it. And the last one, if we want to have a strong church, make it a working church. Everyone has something to do. No one must bury his or her talent. Kapatid, ano bang ibinigay sa'yo ng Panginoon na pwede mong gamitin sa Kanya? Na kung nakita mo yun, kung na-figure out mo kung ano yung bagay na yun, then ipagamit mo sa Kanya. Because every one of us here, I believe na mayroong ibinigay sa iyo ang Diyos para gamitin mo sa Kanyang gawain. Hindi lamang disenyo ng Diyos na maging taga-upo ka. Taga-pakinig. Ang disenyo ng Diyos is hindi ka lamang maging taga-pakinig, kundi maging taga-sunod din lamang ng salita ng Diyos. Amen? Amen? So I hope that we will somehow reflect out of this truth from the Word of God. Makikita natin, ano ba talaga ang... ang, ang ano ba talaga ang formula para magkaroon tayo ng isang iglesyang matibay at matatag? Dumarating ang problema mga kapatid, normal yan. Dumadating ang mga, ang mga bagay na hindi natin inasahan, normal yan. Amen? But the goal of everyone must, must be like this. How am I going? An- anong pwede kong i-share para ang simbahan namin ay maging unified? Maging matatag? Sana kapatid, hindi na tayo... Is- hindi na tayo yung isa sa mga taong nagiging dahilan upang ang simbahan natin ay bumagsak at manghina. Bagkos ang goal natin, papaano, ano bang contribution ang pwede kong ibigay para ang simbahan namin ay patuloy na magpatuloy at patuloy na tumibay. Manalangin po tayo.